Wangaza's husband quiz over bloggers' brutal murder. Uh, that is uh, uh, Meru Governor's brother, county director or protocol, and four others in custody. The story is, uh, uh, has been attracting a lot of uh, public attention for a couple of weeks now, and we are still waiting to see how it will end. Fleshed out there for you on page eight. All right, let's cross over now to the front page of the Daily Nation. This is what's on the on the splash of the Daily Nation. Murder, Mwangaza, husband and sister quizzed. The mystery death, uh, governor's brother is also being held by detectives alongside eight other suspects still being held for questioning. The husband to the governor, here he is, um, standing tall. Yeah, they have him. So, Meru governor, Kawiro Mwangaza's husband and sister are the latest members of her family to be arraigned and to be charged for questioning over the brutal killing of blogger Daniel Muthiani, a.k.a. Sniper. This is what you have here. Uh, the story is uh, on um, uh, the inner pages of the standard of the Daily Nation on page 7. You can take a look at that story in details. Um, again, on the front page is back to school and uh, we can see uh, many students reported to school yesterday and uh, perhaps this is just but a representation of what really happened yesterday and is going to continue for the better part of this week. Stretched facilities as for months report, record admission members uh, numbers were reported across the country yesterday when the last K-4-4 class turned up for admission to secondary schools, even as parents declared um, the high prices of items that their children require. Uh, this according to Sport Check, which was conducted by reporters across the country. And of course, even our reporter, uh, Joseph Ahungo, has that story. Director, please just keep it ready for me there. Uh, admission yesterday at uh, various schools uh, by Joseph Ahungo. If you have it, please, you can play it for us. Um, yes. But uh, that is what is happening here. Let's continue uh, on the inner pages. Uh, student held for murder had deferred his studies, according to a student here. Victim's mother says that she is poor and has pegged hopes of a better life on her daughter. Let's continue the story. Um, this is, uh, we go. Uh, the, the case of uh, Martha Kome and the executive is also here. On uh, the inner pages of the Daily Nation, call because for talks with Ruto over his attacks on the courts. This is what you have here. According to the Daily Nation, the Chief Justice said that um, she has already done a formal, a formal letter to the President, but to this date, as at yesterday, the, uh, the judiciary um, has not yet received that response. President has accused unnamed persons of using corrupt judges to block projects initiated by his administration. So that's what you have here. Kohome termed as non-negotiable the requirement that judicial officers uphold the highest standards of integrity while discharging their mandate. And according to Kohome, she said that the judiciary is ready to receive any petition as far as any applicant or any um, uh, complainant is uh, uh, has any complaint and follow all the appeal procedure to lodge his case. And so, speaking yesterday, Chief Justice Martha Kome, who is also the chairperson of the JSC, said that the commission wants a meeting with the President Ruto to discuss the issues he has been raising concerning alleged corruption in the judiciary. So, she also added that, uh, yes, uh, courts are open, but even after 5 p.m., Applications can still be done online. So anybody can do an online application and the cases will be hard on merit and based on the law provided under the Constitution. That's where we have it. All right, Kalonzo pulls uh, now plots how to gain political clout. Uh, there we have it. Waipa Party holds its first national executive committee meeting this year today to chart the way forward. An interesting development. Um, there we have it. According to the... Uh, Kalonzo Musioka, the Wiper Party is going to have the neck meeting today to chart way forward in as far as this is concerned. Of course, in the couple of weeks, a week or so, we've had a lot of discussion and talks about uh, Paul's uh, whether Kalonzo Musioka should now focus his uh, succession politics towards 2027 and said that he is now more ready to succeed President William Ruto and pleaded with, uh, with Odium leader Ludinga, who is also his um, uh, co-principal in the Azimio coalition,
to support him this time around. So he said that Waipa Democratic Movement will hold its first National Executive Committee meeting this year today and a key agenda will be discussions to how to extend party leader Kaluzi Musyoka's political influence beyond Ukambani ahead of the 2027 general election. All right, this is good. So we'll, we'll see how uh, the resolution and their ratification, whatever they'll come up with after that me next meeting, Mr. Musioka maintained that uh, no one will deter his 2027 presidential bid. He said that uh, Wiper Party is planning to make significant inroads in Nairobi County. Makwini Senator Daniel Manzo uh, stated that Wiper also wants to become the dominant party in the coast counties. That is Kwale, Kilifi, uh, Taita Taveta, Mombasa, etc., etc. There we have it. Okay. So, uh, let's have that story. Uh, from once, reporting back to school. Director, do you have it ready now? All right. We'll come back to that story later on. All right. So, we'll wait to get to understand what is really, really going to come out of that next meeting in as far as this is concerned. Succession, su succession talks. Woo! <laughs> succession talks. Uh, talk ill time, Gashagua child critics. That is what we have. Um, Rift Valley leaders assure DP of their support during the burial of Bumet Senator's father, that is Hilary Sige. Okay, DP says that uh, his, his main focus um, is to help the president achieve the goals he has set. And um, yeah, we've heard that story about the Kiharu member of parliament. Ndidi Nyoro, and now the Deputy President Rigade yesterday dismissed as premature succession politics in Kenya and in Kenya Kwanzaa that has led to some politicians from his central Kenya backyard to demand that uh, he be dropped in the 2027 polls. And now Mr. Gashagwa reiterated his commitment to serve as a principal assistant to President William Bruto, emphasizing that uh, he will not engage in uh, unnecessary succession politics. He said that his main focus and his main agenda is to assist President William Ruto to deliver on his manifesto. Last week, some Kenya Kwanzaa um, MPs proposed Kiharu, Member of Parliament, and Dini Nyoro, as the possible replacement of uh, Mr. Gashagwa in the 2027 uh, general election, sparking a lot of uh, conflict within the ruling UDA party. Uh, but uh, the DP yesterday told the critics that uh, he's focused on um, his mandate as the deputy president and does not mix issues. Uh, remember, we, we have um, different outfits there. We have got Sabina Shege. Uh, we have got um, Ayala member of parliament, uh, Kalini Kega, all members of the Jubilee Party. Uh, Uru Kenyatta is also there, still fighting for the heart of the Jubilee Party. Cases here and there. Um, last week, the president met MCS from Nakuru and the Rifle region at uh, Nakuru State Lodge for a consultative meeting. And now this is coming out at this particular time. So it's interesting how this political uh, uh, field will tell, uh, tell towards uh, which direction. It's, it's amazing how politics in Kenya is being played. So there we have it. He said that he's not ready for that. Mwangaza's husband and sister quizzed over bloggers' murder. That's on the uh, inner pages of the Daily Nation here. Uh, three members of Meru Governor's family have now recorded statements, even as she cited political interference. Um, yeah, so let's wait and uh, just hope uh, that things will be the way they are. And uh, there we have it, according to political activists, uh, Political activist, uh, who is also a blogger, went missing on December 2nd before his body was found in Tarakanithi on December 16th. That is what we have. All right. Okay. So, yeah, let's, let's see on that story uh, where we have that um, uh, the Meru governor, Kabira Mongaza's spouse, that is Murega Baisho, and her sister, Miriam Guantai have uh, recorded police statements in connection with the murder of blogger and politician activist, um, political activist Daniel Muthiani, also known as Sniper. The two were summoned by detectives 
to the Directorate of Criminal Investigation, Sine in Meru, and spent the entire afternoon recording statements about what they knew about the murder. So, there we have it. So, sources indicate that uh, Mr. Mwangaza, accompanied by her accompanied her family members to the DCI County headquarters at around 2 p.m. after she pres uh, uh, presided over a Sunday service at her Baite Family Fellowship Church that is in Meru County. So, yeah, the story still continues and uh, let's wait and see how the whole thing will pan out. President, again, uh, still... Treasury one step closer to single account as cabinet approves plan. Approval is the culmination of a decade-long effort to consolidate government funds under one account. This is what you have. Um, the National Treasury has inched closer to accessing the billions of shillings held by government ministries and agencies in commercial bank account. After the cabinet approved implementation of the Treasury's single account or TSA that has been in years uh, been years in making, the approval is the culmination of decade of a decade long effort to consolidate government funds under one account for easier control of of outflows and access to surplus funds in the hands of government agencies and parastatals. So it also points to pain to, for commercial banks, which are now facing up the, uh, to the prospect of ceding billions of shillings worth of sticky deposits to the exchequer, tightening their liquidity position and uh, forcing them now to seek long-term deposits elsewhere, likely at a higher cost. So by the end of June 2023, data from the Central Bank of Kenya uh, showed that deposits by the Kenyans, by the central government and other public sector entities um, in commercial banks stood at 509.8 billion shillings, 509 billion shillings, accounting for 10% of the banking sector's total deposits of 4.92 trillion shillings at that time. So questions have also been raised over the interest earned by the deposits in banks and whether the amounts all end up with the exchequer. Some of the agencies and parastatals are also major buyers of government securities, resulting in a situation where the government ends up borrowing its own funds at a premium rate. Yeah. So there we have it. All right. So there we have it. Before we take a quick break, let's uh, take a look at what you have on the front page of uh, the standard newspaper, CJ Turuto, Do Not Lead Us to Anarchy. That is the front page of the standard newspaper. Chief Justice Martha Komi has warned the president and his allies that uh, undermining the judiciary is an assault to the democracy and will only take the country down the path of chaos and lawlessness. The press conference was there yesterday. You can take a look at that story on the inner pages of the standard. Gashagwas, Mount Kenya wars deepen. That is again on the uh, eighth page. Of course, we've also tackled that one uh, on other people, the People Daily and Daily Nation. DPP, lawyers clash in Mandago, uh, uh, Mandago trial. Again, the front page here is back to school. Uh, yes, you'll have to get there. Either way, whichever way, you'll have to get. Do the manenos. <laughs> it's back to school. Of course, we wish all the form ones all the very best. Four years. See mingi sana. See mingi sana. All right. So, there we go. Uh, a journey of a thousand miles, of course, began for a couple of them. The case between the judiciary and the executive also continues there. And uh, yes, uh, that will continue on the inner pages. Thank you very much. Uh, JSC, together with the uh, Chief Justice and other JSC members, had a uh, press conference yesterday. CJ warns of anarchy over Ruto's attacks on judiciary. It has been a debate that we've been talking about, and it has been on the political platforms for quite a number of days now. Kwame says that JSC yet to receive any corruption complaints from president, despite branding judiciary as a club of corrupt judges. A club of corrupt judges. JSC now pledges to continue fulfilling its constitutional responsibilities and ensuring the public remains 
informed about outcomes of cases presented before it. And finally, no, uh, no illegal fees added as students join Form 1. Was it? Is it? Will it not? All right, needy students to flock to schools as principals opt to find solution. This is what it is. Again, we wish all the students joining Form 1 all the very best. Okay. So, Raila says that attacks on courts hurting Kenya's economy, politics. See, there you all have it. You can take a look at your local daily and read more details. There we go. So, Gashagwa, Nyoro Supremacy Battle threatens to split Mount Kenya leaders. Again, that's a very interesting story. Um, is it going to be? And remember, all the three gentlemen in one picture, Ndini Nyoro, President William Ruto, and Rigade Gashagwa in one picture, are very powerful one for that matter. Gashagwa, Nyoro Supremacy Battle threatens to split Mount Kenya leaders. Um, uh, Kuraria said that the region lacked a kingpin who could lead and unite all the leaders. And Kahiga, who is the Nyeri governor, says that the president may have nothing to do with the Nyoro's ambition, saying that his um, youthfulness could be driving him. <laughs> okay, members, um, Mount Kenya is split already. An interesting development. All right, let's take a break and we come back. Uh, GMK still continues, but uh, please stay with us because you know how we do it. This is Good Morning Kenya. Have a good morning.